Thank you. Call to order. This is the 23rd regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. All of life is a journey. Which paths we take, what we look back on, and what we look forward to is up to us. We determine our destination, what kind of road we will take to get there, and how happy we are when we get there. A little fluffy on the quote tonight. I know, so. I know. From the, <laughs> from the little book of happiness. So. Yeah, I had to do it. <laughs> so here I have for you the uh, presidential wit and wisdom quotes <laughs> that I'd like to give you just so everybody knows. I promised Sue this two years ago. Two years ago. Thank and you I very much. I never got it to her. Uh, this does stay within the $5 gift lock because I bought it from the used bookstore for four bucks. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, <Mary. laughs> Roll call, please. Warren? Here. Falk. Here. Powers. Here. Decker. Excuse. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Ka. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. We have a quorum. Now if we can all join Alder Person Vanderweel in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag. flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jody. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the last Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Jane Kautzer to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee, term to expire 4-25-2011. Harry Kautzer to be considered for appointment to the Mayor's International Committee, term to expire 4-25-2011, signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Steve. Under discussion, any questions on these candidates for the Mayor's International Committee? There is none. Roll call, please. We need a motion. Oh, we need a motion to I'd, approve? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'd make a motion to approve the appointments. To second. Me. We have a motion and a second to approve the appointments. Now, is there any discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. And Wangaman. Aye. Fifteen ayes. And carries. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I forgot something in my office. Um, is Laura Greeny here this evening? Laura, if you can come up front, please. Sorry about that, Laura. I almost forgot you in my office there. So. Um, Ms. Greeny is the, uh, with the Sheboygan County WIC project. She's a nutritionist and the Wisconsin Dietetic Association president this year. Um, this is a proclamation from my office. Whereas registered dietitians are the food and nutrition experts who can translate the science of nutrition into practical solutions for healthy living. And registered dietitians have degrees in nutrition, dietetics, public health, or a related field from well-respected accredited colleges and universities, completed an internship, and passed an examination. And registered dietitians use their nutrition expertise to help individuals make unique, positive lifestyle changes, which is always good. And registered dietitians work through 
Community and hospitals, schools, public health clinics, nursing homes, fitness centers, food management, food industry, universities, research, and private practice and registered dietitians are advocates for advancing the nutritional status of Americans and people around the world. Now, therefore, I, Bob Ryan, by virtue of, and of the authority invested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim March 9th, 2011, as Registered Dietitian Day. And this is for you, ma'am. Would you like to say a couple words? On behalf of myself and my fellow RDs, I want to thank the mayor and the Common Council for this proclamation. And I also want to acknowledge that besides Registered Dietitian Day, March is also National Nutrition Month. So you have a whole month to develop good, healthy eating habits. And you know where to find advice if you need it. In my case, I'm just about two blocks over in the Health and Human Services building. Um, so again, I want to thank you on behalf of myself and my fellow RDs. And it's very hard to disagree with anybody with shamrocks on their shirts. So. <laughs> okay, moving on. Public forum? No one this evening. Mayor's announcements. Uh, there could be a long council meeting this evening with a couple issues, so we'll pass on those tonight. Consent agenda. <coughs> President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that all RCs be accepted and adopted, all ROs accepted and placed on file, and all resolutions and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hannon? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kahn? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wonkman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Officers 2, 2316 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. President Kittleson. Need a motion to uh, accept and file. A, a motion. I'd like um, make, to make a motion to accept and file. And Second. approve the license. And approve the licenses. And approve the licenses. Thank you. Still second. We have a motion and a second. We accept and file and approve the licenses. Under discussion. If there's no discussion. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Bauk? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2317 through 2327 to be referred. Ordinances introduce three. 2328 through 2324 with the exception of 2332 to be referred. 2332 will lie over until the next council meeting. Report of committee 6, 2335 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 8936 based upon her record of violations and public safety concerns. Vice President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the applicant uh, was denied based on the record of violations uh, and uh, some new history that came to light after her application. Uh, so uh, the committee decided to deny at that point. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Abstain. Versi? Aye. Wonkerman? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me, Born? Aye. Falk? Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 2336 by Public Works recommending filing document submitting a communication from the Gus Macker Tournament Chairman requesting that the Boys and Girls Club be granted permission to host the 2011 Gus Macker 3 on 3 basketball tournament 
at Deland Park on August 4th, 7th, and approving the request. Public Works, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Haas? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of Committee 7, 2337, by law and licensing, recommending granting various licenses. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted, and the license be granted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and grant the licenses under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heinemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2338 by law and licensing recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 8954 based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity and his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Uh, thank you. I believe that the uh, description explains it all. Uh, however, just to add that there the convictions did include um, uh, burglary items, and we felt that in the public safety's interest not to grant a license to a test cab driver had burglary was important. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Kath? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8, 23 by Finance, recommending entering into an agreement for consultative services from the Center for Political Science and Public Policy Research from the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater to perform a two-phase analysis for the city of Sheboygan. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Um, thank you. Um, we have uh, Susan and Jolly from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater that are here to uh, entertain any questions that the council may have on how the process may go, their credentials, those types of things. So I would uh, ask that they be able to come forward and Can we speak. We have a motion to open the floor then? Motion to open the floor. Second. Second. We have a motion in several seconds to open the floor. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Ladies, please. I think that is fine. <laughs> <laughs> You may be. You may yes. want to be. You never know. Um, we faced uh, councils before where our students have actually been on the council, and so that's really turnabout when you've got kids who are in your classes and then they're the ones asking you the questions. So, um, I'm Susan Johnson, and this is my colleague Jolly Emery, and um, we're up from UW Whitewater, and we're going to talk about the project that we've been um, asked to propose. Um, regarding some, um, some help that we could provide for the city of Sheboygan. So um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, and she's going to give you some background on our center and also um, talk about phase one of the project, and then I will talk about phase two. And while she begins, I'm going to pass out a folder for each of the council members that has um, information about our center and also a, a copy of the presentation for tonight. Okay, I have a couple lights up here which I'm going to turn off for the moment. Um, if you know, we'll go through the presentation and then we'll have we'll entertain questions <coughs> afterward if that works for everybody. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Jolly, and um, what Susan is passing out to you right now <coughs> are packets that include information about us and about the center. Um, what we do at the center is we provide a variety of services 
to uh, local governments um, such as Sheboygan. We've done two projects so far with Janesville and the city of Whitewater. We've been contacted by other cities to do a variety of projects. But what our area of expertise is as a center is the construction execution analysis of survey results. Um, we also do evaluation, which means we evaluate existing programs. Um, we are capable of evaluating best practices so we can analyze uh, organizations and organizational structure. And we can also provide, through that analysis, some recommendations of organizational change, if that's what um, cities or other governments are looking for. We also provide opportunities for undergraduate research. That's a big push for us as a center at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater to give students the opportunity to get some hands-on experience. We have a thriving public administration program. It's full of undergraduates, but they do go on, uh, many of them, to either go to a graduate school to get their master's in public administration, or they go immediately into some sort of um, city administrative type of job or um, other types of public administration positions. With respect to the first phase of the program, what we plan to do, and there's uh, some description in there too, but phase one is basically first learning some history about the city of Sheboygan, what your organizational structure is. I know that you have several departments, and Susan and I did a little bit of homework trying to figure out um, what the organizational structure is of the various departments and agencies within the city. Excuse me. We didn't find a lot of information online. So the first part would be gathering information from various people within the city who could provide us with um, some sort of charts that might show us what the flow of information is, communication, um, whether they're hierarchically arranged or if they're more lateral in that respect. And then what we also plan to do, because sometimes there are a little bit of um, differences or uh, reinforcement, perhaps, is talk to directly, interview directly people um, in a variety of positions in city government here. So we would talk to the key stakeholders in a variety of the agencies that you have, and then also, um, you know, people who uh, are um, sort of at the street level, so to speak. And we also are interested in doing some focus group um, evaluation, gathering some data in that way. Then what we would like to do after we gather all this information, so the historical data, um, the current data with regard to your operations, and then the feedback that we get from the interviews and the focus group is to do an analysis and provide you with a thorough analysis of what is taking place in terms of your organization. From there, we would um, look at some best practices. There are a lot of innovative ideas that are taking place in municipal governments throughout the country. And so we would do some um, comparisons with cities of similar size, uh, similar, as similar as possible demographics and industry and the like. And um, provide you with uh, some recommendations based upon that. Um, in phase one, we'd also provide you, of course, with an electronic copy as well as hard copies of whatever um, analysis we come up with. And so Susan is going to talk to you now about phase two. So phase two of the project involves a citizen um, satisfaction survey. And the goal of that would be to gain feedback on city services and also get an idea of what the residents of Sheboygan um, what they like, what they don't like, what they like to see changed, perhaps what they're familiar with that the city offers and what perhaps you're offering that they're not aware of. So we do um, a whole range of things in coming up with a survey of the residents. And so the first thing that we would do in very close collaboration with um, the city would be to, come to put together the questionnaire. And it's really important that we work in collaboration because you know your city um, much better than we do, obviously. And so we're going to do our best to learn as much as we can. But in terms of looking at um, the information that you want to gather, we would work with city staff and um, council members, et cetera, to um, get a sense of what it is that you want to know from the citizens. So we would design the questionnaire to identify citizen priorities and preferences and then move forward from there. After we have the questionnaire, completed, then we would move on to actual execution of the survey. And what we, what we are planning on is a mail survey 
that would, and the preliminary numbers that we talked about were um, a sample size of 1,500 people, uh, male survey, and the goal would be to get as representative a sample as possible of the city. So um, 1,500 as an initial mailing might for a city this size, but if you look at most polls, um, the poll that just came out actually today in regard to um, people's views about the budget repair bill, it had a sample size of 600 and something. So what we're hoping is that we put a sample out, we put a sample size out there of 1,500, and then the average response rate tends to be between 10 and 25 percent. So we can do things to strategize to try to get us up to where we're getting, you know, three or 400 um, responses back and then we want to ensure that that's a representative sample of the population and if it comes back that it's not a representative sample lots of times surveys they skew older um, sometimes they skew more female sometimes they skew um, whiter and so we um, have methodology that we can use and we have used in the past to then make sure that whatever we get back we can adjust so that it adequately reflects the demographic distribution in uh, the city of, of Sheboygan and after the surveys are mailed out and then we get them back, then we will engage in um, entering all the data and then analyzing the data. And um, when we've done this in the past, we've basically turned the sort of um, just the, the, the very preliminary information back to the, um, the city and said, okay, here's the prelim very preliminary data. What else do you want to see? And then at that point, if you, if you pick up on something, you say, hey, we want to see, see why this group is saying one thing and another group is saying another thing, or why are older people feeling one way, we can then um, dig down in the data based on what it is that you're seeing from the initial look at the results, and then we can go further and provide you what you want in, uh, in that regard. And then we'll write up a formal report and uh, submit that to you, and also provide a public presentation of the findings, and then get feedback, and then once that process is over, then we will produce a, uh, a final report. And then we've also been asked to take phases one and two and bring them together. And so what we would do in that final report would be to take what we found in phase one of the project and then look at how that compares with what we found in phase two of the project and then roll that all up together in our final report that has general recommendations and observations based on what we found in both phases of the um, presentation. And then we'd be happy to come back up here and present to the council or present in other formats that um, you deem appropriate. So for example, when we worked with the city of Water, we presented to their planning commission because we were helping them with their strategic plan. And then we also presented to the full council. And then we also came and we met, we met with just the senior administrative staff. So we did three presentations for um, Whitewater, okay, as one example. So um, I'm going to leave, we were asked to speak, to speak a few minutes, so I'm going to now um, end my presentation, and uh, Charlie and I are happy to take all of your questions. Okay. Thank you, professors. Um, do we have any uh, questions from the council? You can buzz in at any time here. Alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if you could just talk for a minute. I, I was a big skeptic of this uh, survey and, and this recommendation in, in Finance Committee. Uh, but after talking uh, to the two doctors, if you could just Please, talk Susan about Susan and Jolly is fine. Yeah. <laughs> if you could just talk about your, I was skeptical about why are we going to have a couple of PhDs do organizational design work for us. So if you could talk about that, your background in that, that would help. Um, well, I've had both academic and applied background with regard to organizational behavior and organizational design. As a graduate student, I worked with um, someone at Emory University where I went to grad school, and this was um, during welfare reform. And so basically what we did was we studied Georgia and all the various partners involved in welfare in Georgia. And because of welfare reform, as you all know, W2 Wisconsin led the way kind of for all of the change, um, we worked with county and city governments to help them understand devolution in terms of policy and then how to make organizational changes so that they were more collaborative. Um, and then what we also did, and this again is a little dated, but um, we worked with, uh, we compared what was going on in Atlanta, which is an empowerment zone city that had to deal with welfare reform with other empowerment zone cities um, across the nation. And so um, looking again at agencies, how they work, changing their models in terms of organization and more with 
respect to welfare reform and collaboration. Um, on the academic side, I've taught organizational behavior. Um, we have, as I said before, a public administration program at UW-Whitewater. I taught organizational behavior as a general organizational behavior class when I was at California State University of Angeles, which is where I was before I came here, and I love Wisconsin. I'm so happy to be here, um, as opposed to LA. And um, so I've taught it from that perspective as a organizational behavior course. And then I teach here at the UW-Whitewater um, a course on criminal justice administration. And much of what we do is look at organizational behavior. So I've had both academic and applied um, experience with respect to that. Susan, did you want to? Okay. Um, my experience in this area is not as extensive as Dr. Emery's. But um, I, uh, I did some work with the city of Whitewater when they were first working on their uh, strategic plan about five or six years ago when Kevin Brunner first became city manager, he asked me to, to, to work with them um, more as a, a town gown kind of thing. So I wasn't, I wasn't being paid. I was just helping them and, going, and working with them on that. And then also I coordinated our public administration program and uh, my degrees from Northern Illinois University. And I took some, um, I worked with some faculty there when I was in my master's program and PhD program that were in the public administration program. And um, so that's my background. But clearly Dr. Emery has more experience in, uh, in that regard. And I hope to bring um, more to the survey side of it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Matamila. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's wonderful that we're going to have an outside professional group looking at us and telling us how we can do things better. And the part that I especially like is the non-biased questionnaire, because no matter how hard we all worked, every one of our questions would be biased in some manner. And I really think that's important, to find out what the citizens truly like without the bias of myself or any one of us asking the question. And I'm also glad to hear that we're going to get some preliminary numbers and some preliminary presentations. I think that's important so that we don't wait until autumn to get the final thick book. I think the preliminary is very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, to kind of dovetail what uh, Alderman Montemayor was saying is uh, part of the reason we uh, went down and visited um, with Jolly and, and Susan was to, or vice versa, um, <laughs> the <laughs> University of Wisconsin Whitewater was to, um, we needed somebody that could give us an unbiased independent look. But one of the things we've asked them to do as part of this is not to be nice, <laughs> is to be very hard and give us recommendations that we can take and implement right away. Uh, we've all been part of these studies where you give you, they give you a binder and they stick it on the, you stick it on the shelf and never to be seen again. Um, so that's what we're expecting um, out of this survey is kind of a, a, a facts, no holds barred kind of, of results that we can take and, and implement. Um, just a, a quick question. We had discussed the timeline of, of one June for phase one, sometime August to have the survey done and, and the results to us. Is that something you feel is still achievable? Um, I think with regard to phase one, it depends upon how quickly the historical information gets to us and then the, you know, the current, which we'd also get from our interviews, so setting that up. So sometime in June, whether or not we would meet that June one, again, is predicated to some degree on getting that other information. Um, certainly in terms of the survey, uh, that is very doable, so no concerns about that date. It's just, you know, sometime in June, June one will obviously be predicated on how quickly you get the other information and the interview is completed. Great, thanks. And if you need testimonials that we can be not nice, I can get you dozens. <laughs> 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 Students, colleagues, yeah. <laughs> Neighbors. Oh. Yeah, I, th I think from our end, we should probably have a point person in the city for, for you to go to if this is approved, which we will do, and I think he's sitting in this room, so. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering where Tom was. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Okay, uh, Alderperson Kittleson, President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor, thank you. I, I just wanted to say it was wonderful to visit with these ladies. Um, it, it was a great visit to Whitewater. And the project in Whitewater was in 2009, I believe, correct? Right. And, and what I like about, and you did this also for the, the uh, Janesville Police Department, mm -hmm. I guess what I like is that you, they, they stated that the project went so smoothly. And, and again, as the other aldermen have said, that we are able to use the information that you're going to give us. And I think that that's really uh, so important, that we're able to use that information, that it doesn't sit on the shelf, but that we can utilize it. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, President Kittleson. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, Dr. Emery, can you, I notice you have a testimony, testimonial in here from the police chief over in Janesville, and I'm just wondering if you could just run through a little bit how that process went with the police department and kind of what some of your recommendations were. And I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that those recommendations would work in Sheboygan, but just give us some kind of an idea of the process, how it went. Right. Um, not to be misleading, that uh, survey was uh, done on behest of the chief of police who was fairly new to Janesville, and what he wanted to do was get a sense of um, really what the citizens in Janesville thought of the police department. So it was more of um, a citizen satisfaction survey than it was any sort of organizational change. So we didn't study um, the organization as much as we studied what kind of services they provide and what citizens thought with respect to the police department and their delivery of those services and where they thought. Um, future uh, problems might be and the kinds of things that they would like to see the police department provide more of in terms of community outreach and those kind of things. So it wasn't necessarily about their organization and how it works, but we did give them some information with respect to um, how citizens perceived the police within various areas in the city, so. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Alderman Barn. Vice President Rinflesh. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Two-part question, really. Uh, just speaking to phone calls I've received from constituents uh, and their concerns. Really, two, like I said, two-part. Uh, first is the 18,000 as an investment uh, on behalf of the taxpayers' uh, investment. Uh, what can they expect to return? Uh, what kind of return can they expect on that investment? Um, and uh, the second part of that question is um, also constituent-based. Uh, what exactly can you find out versus a through a survey that we as elected officials who are, in theory, in tune with our constituents, uh, un unable to provide. Okay. Um, in, in terms, I'll, ask, I'll answer the, uh, the second question first. Um, as social scientists, and I, um, what we can do is, kinda is, is develop a, a tool that will help you gain information from your citizens in an unbiased way, as a couple people have, have mentioned. And also, it's going to help us help you Look at yourself as it compares to other, you know, like-sized cities and things like that, and and ask questions that other people have asked in other places, and it allows you to um, sort of set yourself and you know where do you, where do you see yourself in uh, in comparison to other cities? And I think I think that it's a it's a fair question. I mean, to to say well, you know, we we're out there, we talk to people all the time, and how is it any different? Well, in our survey methodology, the idea is that we're going to try to do our best to get a, the best cross section we can of Sheboygan. And that might be the people who are contacting you, for example, um, they're probably very committed to the city and they have a big stake in the city. But we're going to try to get a broader look at people in Sheboygan and um, provide you with information that you might not be getting from people who stop you on the street or who pick up the phone and call you or who might send you an email. So I think that um, our sample is going to be better than kind of a man on the street, you know what I mean, or a phone call sort of thing. In terms of the cost, um, the, the work is very, well, first of all, the, the um, part of the money will go to hire students, okay, because as Jolly said, we do hire students to help us with um, some of the research and then also with data entry and report preparation. So some of, the, some of the money goes to hire students. So it's part of our commitment to helping with undergraduate research and things like that. Also, um, some of the cost has to do with the, with the distance. And so we're factoring in some of the travel costs for us to come up here several times to do interviews and then also to... Um, to come and present, present the findings and things like that. And then the work, is, it's very labor intensive. And so um, when we're doing things like you know, data entry and analysis and report writing, it, um, it takes a lot of time. And, um, and so having done it you know, ever since I was in, in graduate school in the you know, early 90s, 
through now, there's just no quick way to, um, quicker way to enter surveys and do the analysis and talk about it and do the research. And so it's just, it's, it's a lot of labor, you know, and a lot of hours. And, um, uh, and I mean, and we, can, we can say to you that, you know, we, we have worked most recently with Janesville and with Whitewater and they were very, you know, happy with our work and we, we, we do stuff on time so we don't have problems with, um, you know, not getting the stuff done. And um, I feel that, you know, both the um, city manager and the police chief that we worked with would, you know, offer more testimonials to, uh, to that, so. Yeah. Please. Thank you. I have no doubt that the, the 18,000 be well spent on the students. Um, I guess the further question then is explaining to those constituents, uh, we're spending 18,000, what are we getting in return that will be worth more than 18,000? Okay. okay. Vastly more than 18,000, I'm sure, but. Sure, so one of, the, one of the things that we've been asked to do is to look at your organizational structure and look at where there might be overlap, for example, or look where we might be able to um, offer suggestions about consolidation and things like that. And so we don't want to come in here and recommend that you let a lot of people go, but the fact is if we find a lot of duplication, then we might make some recommendations that might then lead to a restructuring that might lead to cost, significant cost savings in that regard if you're going to just determine to limit, eliminate positions through retirement or attrition or restructuring. So I think that in that regard, um, it could end up being quite a bit more. But that's going to be your decision to make after we make the recommendations there. With regard to the survey, because we're using scientific methods, you could use that everything will belong to you after we're done. It's yours. You've obviously paid for it. So that could be used for other purposes. So perhaps you know, you're seeking some sort of grant or something along those lines. Because it's a scientific survey, you are more likely to get purchased from that than you would if it's based simply on anecdotal data you know, from a few citizens who have you know, suggested something to you. So it can have added value. And um, as Susan said, with regard to phase one, um, it will certainly have um, some, offer some savings because what we're looking at is efficiency. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. In light of what's happening in the state of Wisconsin right now, okay, and I've, I can't imagine anybody wouldn't know what's going on, Starting a survey and doing this type of work now without knowing what the impacts are going to be, what might happen in maybe a week or two weeks, um, do you think that it, it makes sense to, to make a commitment to spend 18000 on something that might be resolved uh, through the state? You know, we're going to be able, no matter how it comes out, there might be an opportunity for us to do more with the people that we have because of possible concessions or not. Therefore, then those citizens would say, well, now we have the money to pay for these services. I'd rather be able to do that. Where you might say, "Well, we don't, you don't, you don't need that." So I, I'm just kind of wondering whether we should be starting it now, or should be holding this document and waiting for um, uh, at least some things to come to rest in the state of Wisconsin. So. And may I jump in? Would you like to answer that? I would like to at least Please. make a comment. I, I, I appreciate your concern, Alderman Heidemann. I think. Part of the challenge, though, is just what happened, what's happening in Madison is not going to solve all the problems um, with our budget. And what, what the survey is going to help us do is be able to prioritize what services our taxpayers want to see. So when it comes to the budget and we have to say we have to cut or we have to do X, Y, or Z, we know what's the most important thing to the citizens of Sheboygan. And so I actually think it's probably more critical now with what's going on in Madison and what's going on with our budget because we're Again, even if the budget repair bill goes through and his budget comes through, we're not out of the woods yet. That's not going to solve our entire budget issue. So um, again, I, that would be my response to it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderman Heideman, does that? Thank you. Okay, I have a quick question. Uh, you've spoken a lot on this about uh, uh, public administration and uh, your, your, your uh, uh, public uh, administrator uh, uh, students, et cetera. We have a form of government in the city right now, which is mayor council. We don't have a city administrator. Do you see a problem with that? It's a loaded question. Yeah, clearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't be nice. Not, if you don't, want, mayor, if you don't be nice. If you don't want to be nice. This is a good time. Look, I grew up in Chicago. This is a test. So, this is I only mean, a test. You know, um, uh, I think that we're going to offer a fair evaluation, and uh, 
and look at different models and what like-sized cities do in terms of their government structure. And if, if, if we look at it and we say maybe you need an administrator, then we're going to say maybe you need an administrator. Um, as a, as a uh, the professors that teach public administrators, do you see yourself as possibly being biased on that issue? Oh, no, not at all. Because, um, I mean, the, the, the students that we teach are far from being administrators. You know what I mean? They, we're, we're training them to, to work in finance departments and personnel departments and as management analysts within, within uh, uh, management structure. But the, it takes a while before they become city managers. In fact, my, my, my graduate is going to become a city manager soon. And I mean, from, and he graduated 10 years ago. So um, no, not at all. And if it counts for anything, I grew up in Chicago, too. So. Oh, cool. OK. <laughs> there you go. And he's Irish. <laughs> well, I'm Italian, but. <laughs> and the okay. fun begins. Thank you. That was a loaded question. Good answer. Uh, Alderman Hammond, did you have something else? I actually, I actually do have uh, a couple comments. Um, you know, regarding the question of, of you know, why can't we do it internally, I saw the editorial in the press, I'm sure everybody else did, um, about why couldn't we do this. <laughs> you guys are popular and you haven't even been here yet. Um, you know, I, I think, again, the survey and the return on investment, you know, a lot of that comes down to us as a council. You know, they're going to make recommendations, we have to implement them. Um, but what they've been tasked with is, again, to look at the efficiency and the effectiveness of how we deliver the services we deliver. Um, so I think the payback is going to be right there and be able to deliver more effective and efficient services. And that doesn't necessarily mean massive cuts, and we had that lengthy discussion. We're not asking them to come here and figure out where they can slash and burn. It's how can we deliver the services we deliver more effectively and efficiently. And again, the second thing on the survey is we don't know how to frame questions for surveys. If we walked out right now and asked somebody what's the most important thing, it would probably be snow plowing. And in the summer, it'll be grass cutting. It'll be something based off of that. They have the ability to ask, uh, frame the question in a way that's going to eliminate those biases. So um, hopefully that helps. Thank you again, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would not underestimate our ability to find bias in an unbiased survey. Uh, I, I think that, and this goes back to, to my colleagues, I'm disappointed that we're even having this conversation. I think that we have we find ourselves having lacked either the political courage or the political clout to have made these decisions ourselves. Over the past year, we have failed. The mayor uh, uh, put a lot of effort into what many, not quite half, thought was a fine new structure for the city, and it just didn't pass. And, and those of us on different committees have failed in the intervening eight months to come up with a better alternative. So we find ourselves in this position of not having the will or the clout to proffer something new, so we have to go to outside services. That's a position I think we kind of find ourselves in. And so given that, uh, I, uh, and again, I was a big skeptic in committee, but now I think this is a, a necessary alternative. And with, uh, with my background in consumer research and a little bit of OD consulting, $18,000 is a very, very, very uh, uh, good opportunity financially for us. So let me be clear, not a fan that we have to spend it to begin with and think that it's, it's a shame and that I wish the next council would, would, would structure this and do this ourselves. But lacking that, this is probably a good way for us to spend our money. And just one more comment, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. If I don't know about all, Alderman Reif, uh, Vice President Reinflesch, but I respect his, his up and coming academic credentials and the experience that he's doing in class. And uh, after the election, given that uh, you know, if he should win, I, I think you'd add a lot to the conversation uh, if you would involve yourself in that. Thank you again, Alderman Buck. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Since uh, this is coming before us now, if this would have been last year or next year, but right now we're faced with at least a million dollar loss maybe $2 million loss. I think we're going to make a decision on this. It should be up to the new council after the election. For us to impose our will on them after that is sort of uh, putting the horse before the wheel. So uh, I myself will not vote for this, but uh, uh, I think it's a good, uh, uh, a good thing. And, and I think Sheboygan would, would benefit from it. But right now, with the monetary uh, things that are happening to us, uh, I don't see how we could vote on this right now, so I would put this off to the next council. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Um, if I, Alderman Bauck, would you like to go Thank first? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had one more thought after uh, uh, 
Chairman Hammond spoke, um, I would invite you to offer wholesale slashing and burning. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Um, there are ideas, I don't know if they're good ideas or not, but there are ideas out there that would say we could cut our fire department in half. And again, I don't want a bunch of emails, I'm not advocating that, I'm saying we should be open, academics would be open to exploring that notion when there are cities that are our size that have, ha that have half the size of a, of a fire department that we do and then have volunteers or supplement that manpower in other ways. So I would encourage you to disregard what he said. And if you find better ways, if you find comparable cities, you're bringing us ideas. You're bringing us your, hopefully as unbiased as you can be, opinions. And if those are, hey, there are a lot of ways to do this service or that service in ways that are economically better, bring it, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you again, Alderman Bauck. Are you sure you don't, you don't want to be a write-in candidate on this next election? No, sir. Still opportunity. No, sir. Alderman Hammond. <laughs> With all due respect to my learned colleague back here, <laughs> during the conversation we did have in the interest of, of transparency, we did talk about things like outsourcing, we did talk about you know, reducing workforce, but we also talked about cross-leveling, we talked about efficiencies and effectiveness. So we did not leave anything off the table, and I think it was very clear when we left that nothing, um, I mean nothing, is off the table when it comes to the report. Then I commend the wisdom of my <laughs> learning topic. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, yes, I, uh, this, uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, this survey and uh, these recommendations are more important now than ever. We're going to be dealing with a million and a half dollars in a uh, reduction in, in money coming from the state. Um, we're coming into this next budget year with about a $1.2 million structural deficit carrying over from last year. So, you know, we have somewhere, you know, close to $3 million to, that, that we need to make up. Now, granted, we will get a big portion of that uh, through our employees paying into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. Um, and we, we have realized some savings through our insurance, which we will continue, and we will have them paying more in insurance. But I think this is more important now than ever that we get these recommendations before we go into this next budget cycle. Uh, so I support it. Do we have any other discussion? Thank you, doctors, you may sit down. Thank you. Roll call, please. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. No. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. No. And Koth. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Moving on. Ordinance introduce 10 2340 to be referred. Man, matters laid over 11, 2242, RO number 405 1011 by s the city clerk, submitting a communication from Richard Hartman, president of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, stating their position on the situation in Madison with regards to the state budget. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the communication be filed. Accepted and filed. Accepted and filed. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. If there is none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> 2234 resolution number 216-1011 by President Kittleson, supporting the Great Lakes Small Harbors Coalition and its vision of an annual dedicated appropriation that maintains Great Lakes Harbor navigation channels and infrastructure requirements and ongoing recognition and support for harbors that will maximize their economic benefit, enhance quality of life, and protect public safety. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? Under discussion, could we call a, a Chad Pelishik from the Planning Department up sure. to speak on this? I think he got That's some information today. Thank you. This is a, a non-fee membership with a group that's kind of a Great Lakes-based organization that's really pushing the federal government to uh, up 
the ANTI and the Corps of Engineers budget for dredging of harbors. And right now is more, n no more crucial than any time for the city with a Superfund project moving forward and the river dredging happening. And if we don't, it, we're really looking for support from the council to move, to move in the direction of membership with this uh, nonprofit organization that's been really lobbying Washington, D.C. to get the Corps' budget raised for dredging. The issue that we see here in the city is for 35 years, the Corps hasn't dredged this harbor because of the Superfund designation. Um, so we're looking for you know, this group to move in front and really lobby the federal government to be able to get those uh, dredging costs, those dredging projects uh, included in their budgets and additional uh, revenues. The, that there is, as we, the mayor and I met with Congressman Petri uh, today and really proposed to him that he needs to support this uh, from a regional economic basis. Uh, there's a program called the Harbor Trust Fund that's a federal tax that uh, Great Lakes shipping companies pay, and the revenues in that fund are going straight billions up. Billions and billions of but dollars. But the expenditures are going down, and they're not dedicating any money, but they're collecting the money. So we're, this is a group based out of Michigan, and you know we feel as, as we move forward with these dredging projects and getting depth back in our river that this is a good thing. Thanks, Chad. Uh, yeah, Chad and I had the opportunity to go up to the Corps of Engineers office in uh, Kiwani a couple weeks ago uh, for a teleconference between all of the Corps of Engineers offices on the Great Lakes. Um, we were fortunate enough that we were the only two people that showed up at our local Corps of Engineers office. So we moved way up the Corps of Engineers dredging list. Um, but we need to get funding in order to do this, which is why we met with Congressman Petri. Uh, we also uh, joined the uh, Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Initiative, um, which the council approved this past year. Uh, we have another meeting coming up in Chicago on Friday on that. So I think if everything works out with our contacts with the Corps now with the aid of Congressman Petri, and we're going to be contacting uh, Senator, <coughs> Senator Cole, uh, I believe that we're going to uh, get uh, yeah, the Corps of Engineers in here to uh, give us somewhere around 16 feet of water in the entire harbor, which is what we're looking for. So. But this, uh, this is a non-fee type group. It doesn't cost us anything to join and just shows our, uh, our, uh, our participation in it and moving things in a positive direction. This fund has billions and billions of dollars and they're not spending it. So we look for a, approval on this. Is there any discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Samson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Aye. Versi? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Belk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2235, resolution number 217-1011 by Alder Persons, Hammond, Bauk, and Rinfleisch, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget, establishing revenue, and appropriation for the 2011 police training aids from the state, appropriation for equipment to connect WSCS to AT&T Uver needed. Establish appropriation for upgrade of the HVAC mechanicals at Mead Public Library. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. And second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2240, General Ordinance Number 501011 by Alderpersons Hannah, Kittles Hannah Kittleson, Vanderweel, and Versi, amending the 1975 Municipal Code so as to add the position of environmental engineer to the table of organization in the Department of Public Works for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Hammond. Hannah, excuse me. Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Longaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 15 eyes. Motion carries. Uh, other matters? 
Attorney McLean. 2342 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. There we go, I've got it. That goes to law and licensing. 2343 is a communication from James Rinal reminding the council to drop flip-flop parking for the rest of the month of March after daylight savings time starts. Goes to public protection and safety. 2344, submitting a communication from Aaron Brault, Ann Nemshoff, and Paul Weaver, requesting approval to host Sheboygan first and only Olympic distance USAT sanctioned triathlon on Saturday, August 13th on the South Pier District. That also goes to PPNS and to Public Works. 2345 is a communication from the Early Bird Rotary Club requesting permission to hold their annual lobster boil in Fountain Park on Friday, July 22nd. Referred to Public Works. 2346 is a summons and complaint in the matter of U.S. Bank National Association ND versus May Yi Vu et al. Goes to Risk Management. 2347 is a communication from Richard Hartman inquiring about the needed appointments for the Government Structure Committee. That lies over. 2348 is an RO by the Building Inspection Department submitting the report of the Building Inspection Department for the month of February 2011. Will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 2349 is an RO by the Redevelopment Authority advising that at their meeting today at noon, uh, recommending approval of the new ground lease and termination agreement according to the terms set forth in the draft documents with the understanding the final details are worked out by city staff. And if there are any material changes to either document, the document come back to the Redevelopment Authority for approval. And that lies over. Okay, uh, we are going to be going into closed session. Um, just a moment, Alderman Hannah. Uh, we uh, are going to be going off the air and will not return this evening. Uh, we will take the, the vote in open session. However, we will not be back on the air for those folks watching at home. Alderman Hannah, did you have something? Two minute break. Two minute break? Can't do anything in two minutes. We'll make it a five minute break. Five minute break. Uh, can we have the motion to go into closed session? President you, Kittleson, Mayor. everybody. Please. I'd make the motion to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in section 19.851E, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of deliberating regarding the termination of various agreements and new leases relating to the proposed sale by Great Wolf to Claremont New Frontier of the Blue Harbor Resort, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session, and for the purpose of deliberating the purchasing of public property, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Thank you, President Kittleson. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of going into closed session. Oh, we have a roll call. We have to have a roll call. Roll call, please, on the closed session. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Longeman? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. We are in closed session. Everybody, please clear the council chambers, at the exception of uh, Attorney Rosemius can stay. He is an interest in party. I like to start. And uh, department heads of the city. <laughs>